In this tutorial, we'll cover dependency injection, when to use it, and three ways to implement it in Flutter. Dependency injection is a big part of software architecture, and I think the lack of knowledge around this concept can damage the way you develop your applications. So what is dependency injection? Dependency injection is writing code that supplies your objects with other objects that they depend on. And we'll be covering three ways to do that in this tutorial. The full written tutorial is on fullstacks.com and if you'd like to follow along, you can download the code from under the header section. If you're new here, thank you for the subscriptions and for everyone else, please like and subscribe. The code from the starting project only has a home view widget with some text in the middle. Let's look at dependency injection in its most basic form. We'll create a new file called login service and then we'll just create an empty class called login service. And we'll add a property to that class of type API and underneath we'll create another class called API. Let me just pause it here. The login service is now dependent on the API. Dependency injection is the act of supplying the login service with the API. That's literally all that it is. So let's continue. The most common way to inject a dependency is by supplying it through the constructor. We'll create a new login service constructor and we'll pass in the API value through this constructor. That is the code written to inject your API into the login service. So keep that in mind for the rest of this tutorial and when you're developing code on your own. When you hear the term dependency injection, it's just a nice way to supply your objects with the other objects that they depend on. Now let's get on to the flutter parts. The class that we'll be injecting into our widgets will be called app info. We'll keep this class simple and just have a property that returns a welcome message and that message will say hello from fullstacks. Hello. Head over to the home view widget and create a new property called app info. The home view is now dependent on app info and the way that we'll supply this dependency is through the constructor. This approach works perfectly fine for one to maybe two levels of widgets. The problem comes in when you have a widget tree that's five levels deep and the lowest widget requires the app information. To show you the reason why dependency injection exists, we will create five stateless widgets and we'll access the app info in the lowest level widget the easiest way that we can. We can go down the list of the widgets and return the widget below the current one as the build function return value. This way we get a nested structure and the lowest widget will be the deepest one in the widget tree. And this is where the problem comes in that dependency injection will solve. Let's say that the lowest level widget, the like button, now requires the app info value. If you are using your constructor as your dependency injection method, then you would have to pass this value through each of the widgets above it and simply keep the value as a member variable just to pass it down to the next constructor. You can see how this can easily get out of hand and you will be writing a lot of additional code for no extra value. Now let's do some dependency injection. Flutter has a built-in way of, of injecting dependencies or providing data throughout the app and it's called inherited widget. We'll create a new file called inherited injection. You can use the inherited widget snippet to quickly generate all the code for an inherited widget. We'll call our widget inherited injection. The inherited widget effectively allows you to provide access to all its properties to every widget in its subtree. This is done through the build context. This is what Flutter is built on and is a very common pattern. It is used to provide the theme, the media queries and everything else that the base app provides you. So we'll construct a new app info object as a private variable and we'll expose that through a public property called app info. So as I mentioned, the inherited widget can only provide these values to widgets that's within its subtree. And for that reason, we'll wrap our entire material app with the inherited injection widget. Now you can head back over to the home view file and in the build method, we can now retrieve our app info. We do this simply by using the dot of method and passing in the build context. This function will go up the tree using the current build context and find the first instance of inherited injection. And once we have that object, we can now call the app info property and we have our app info deep down in our widget tree. Let's quickly go over the pros and cons of using the inherited widget in your architecture. The one pro is that this is how everything is built in Flutter. There's a lot of examples for it and it's highly optimized. The other pro is that it forces one directional data flow which is important for declarative UI. The cons are as follows. 
there's lots of additional boilerplate around instance tracking. What that means is if you want a new instance every time you request a type, you have to set all of that up through your code. And the same goes for if you want a singleton object and you only want to return that one instance every time. The other big con is that injecting into objects with a context is not available is not the easiest and requires a lot of boilerplate code. And on that note, the last con is that it's very verbose. Lots of code for no added value. Next up, we look at get it. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that getit is one of my favorite ways to inject dependencies into my classes. Coming from a c -sharp background, I do like using service locators to inject functionality into my classes where it's required. Getit is a traditional service locator that allows you to register your interfaces against a concrete implementation. You can also just register your concrete implementation and request that from the service locator. We'll start by adding the getit package to our pub spec. And then we want to create a new file called locator where we will set up our service locator global variable that we'll be using throughout the app. We'll import the getit package and then create a new instance of getit globally called locator. We'll also set up an empty function called setup locator where we will register our classes with a service locator. And to complete all the setup, head over to the main file and import your locator and before we run the app we will call setup locator this way the services and classes are registered before the app runs so it's always available types can be registered in one of two ways in get it we'll start with a factory registration registering a type as a factory is telling get it that whenever you request this type you want a new instance to be returned to you that means that whenever you try and get the type from get it for that specific type you'll always get a new instance back the second way is to register your type as a singleton this is the exact opposite of what a factory does when you request a type that's registered as a singleton it will always return the same object and within the singleton registration there's two ways that you can register your singleton you can register it as a normal singleton where you supply the instance that you wanted to return. To register like this, you have to construct your object and then supply it to the service locator when you register it. I tend to stay away from this because that means that on startup you'll be constructing all of your services and then registering that with your service locator, which can slow down your startup time. The second way to register a singleton is through a lazy singleton registration. For this registration, you provide an anonymous function that returns your service type. And what getit will do is that when this type is first requested, it will then create the instance and keep that instance alive for the rest of your app's lifetime. So in this example, we'll just register our app info as a factory. We can go to the main file and remove the inherited injection widget from around our material app. And now back in the home view, if we want to get the app info that we registered, all we do is get our locator and we request the type that we want through the angle brackets. Let's go over some of the pros and cons. The first and probably the biggest pro is that you can request the type anywhere using the global locator. This promotes cleaner code for setting up your dependency injection because if you do property injection, you don't need to always update your code for the dependency injection to match the new properties that you've added, which is a problem that inherited widget has as well as the dependency injection from provider, which is following this one. The second pro is that instance tracking is automatically taken care of by registering types as a factory or a singleton. The third pro is that you can register types against your interfaces and you can abstract your architecture from the implementation details. And for the last pro, which is also something that makes this very attractive to me, is the fact that setting up the code is very compact and minimal. Your setup locator function literally reads like a document with just lines below each other where you can clearly see what's being registered and how it's being registered. And unlike the other injection methods, it has no clear indication of where the types are being used throughout the architecture. It doesn't actually matter. Now let's look at some of the cons of get it. The first one is that disposing is not a top priority for the service locator. So you have to do your own disposing through the models, um, which is why my architecture makes use of provider and it calls the dispose method on all the change notifier models that I inject through get it. 
And for the second con, the coding guidelines around the Get It service locator is very loose and this can lead to badly written software if you don't understand the concept of architecting your software or even how to do it. The last con is the global object usage. This is the start of multi-directional data flow which is the opposite of what Flutter and all declarative UI frameworks promote. The fact that your information can now travel upstream and there is no guarantee that your UI is a function of the data passed from the top down. But as I've said before, all you need is some guidelines and some strict coding rules and you should be fine using Gitted as a dependency injection framework. The last method that I find fun to use and easy to understand is the provider package as a dependency injector. We'll start by adding the package to our pub spec. Provider is basically the inherited widget but on all the steroids in the world. It functions based on the same rules as the inherited widget which means that it can only provide the providing values to everything in its subtree. For that reason we'll wrap our entire material app once again with the provider this time. The way we supply the values that we want to provide is through the builder property. This builder expects a function that takes in the build context and then returns the value that you want to provide to the rest of the app and for us that's just an instance of app info and now you can go to the home view and you can do the same thing that we did with the inherited widget which is just called provider.of and pass in the context and it will return the first value that it finds up the tree for provider that provides a value let's look at some of the pros and cons for provider the first pro which is the biggest of them all is that provider is great for state management and it is my number one choice for large, small, massive apps, whatever kind of app I'm building, I'm using provider for my state management. The second one for the Flutter purist is that it forces one directional data flow. The third con is that the specialty providers remove a lot of boilerplate code that you would have to write yourself. Specialty providers are things like the stream provider, the listenable provider, all the providers, the change notifier provider. And with these things, you can architect your entire app in a much simpler manner without having to think of setup, cleanup or anything like that. The provider package not only gives you a way to inject all of your data where you want it, but you can also build UI based on it through the consumers that it provides. It keeps things neat and clean and everything looks like Flutter code. And one of the major benefits that it has over Get It is that it provides a way to dispose all of the provided objects. The only con that provider has is the same that inherited widget has and that is to inject classes into objects that doesn't have the build context requires a lot of boilerplate code and it makes your dependency injection setup code dependent on where you are using your actual dependencies. It requires a lot of proxy provider stringing and, and again you require knowledge of where you'll be using your provided values and it's not an automatic injection like with the get it package and the locator those are the three dependency injection methods that i use very frequently less so the inherited widget because of provider itself but you can use all of these tools to build out your architecture please let me know in the comments if there's anything around architecture that you don't understand and i will make a video about it and explain it to you to the best of my abilities I want to say thank you again for all the subscriptions, um, I do appreciate it, I will be sure to keep you guys updated with videos every week and I want to send a special thank you to Jeff Delaney from Fireship, thank you for the shout out and it helped a lot. I'll see you guys next week.